think that all reasoning, uh, even scientific reasoning and or moral reasoning, as you as you would argue, necessarily relies on unprovable assumptions. So I think there are certain things, certain limited things we know with something close to certainty, one's own conscious experience. If I'm in pain, it's just totally evident that that feeling of pain is real or maybe certain elementary truths of mathematics or logic. But I think any step beyond that, yes, involves adopting certain unprovable assumptions. Now, you may say, well, look, the assumptions science rests on have been proven. They've been proven they work. But I mean, I agree with that. But it's it sort of involves a circular argument if we're asking, is it okay to trust our senses? Because you can only know that science works if you already trust your experience and your memory. Um, you, I don't think there's any way of breaking out of that circle. All anyone has access to is the Cartesian solipsism of my experience right now. And to get beyond that, you need to have an act of trust. And also, I mean, science is also dependent on certain unprovable assumptions, such as that the future will resemble the past. Any inductive inference is dependent on that. The great Scottish philosopher Hume pointed to the, the, the impossibility of giving any non-circular justification of induction. Also, that simpler theories are more likely to be true than complex theories. Any, for any empirical data, there are always an infinite number of theories compatible with that data. What a scientist choose between them on the basis of simplicity, elegance, parsimony. But why on earth should a simpler theory be more likely to be true? That is this something we can test for? So yes, yeah, so I think, of course, once once you have those starting points, what you do with it can be rational or irrational. But those basic starting points of knowledge cannot themselves be rationally or empirically demonstrated. Carlo, what what do you think to that discussion? Descartes is alive and well. We can't we can't. We can't verify much beyond what we immediately experience, and we simply have to have faith in our incomplete knowledge. Um, once again, I, I think it's ill formulated, it's badly ill formulated. Uh, I think, uh, let me put it this way certainty, it's uh, badly overappreciated. Uh, we don't need certainty. I think that uh, a lot <laughs> of mistakes that humankind does, uh, including in philosophy, uh, the reason all philosophers' uh, wonderful ideas haven't uh, ended up convincing everybody that they were right is because, uh, to a large extent, there was a, ser a, a search for certainty. Why do we need certainty? What, what, what do we do good with certainty? I am a human being. I'm perfectly happy with the reliability. If I ask, uh, how do I get to... To, to, to downtown, to Piccadilly Circus. Uh, I don't want an answer which is certain 100%. I want a reliable answer. I mean, how do I know <laughs> that the guy isn't cheating me? Are because the two not related in some way? <laughs> it's not about the certain final picture of the world. Science is the best we can say about the world to navigate mm -hmm. it. Uh, politics is not about, I'm absolutely sure that, sure that my politics, uh, it's a true, I'm, I'm the one. It's just what I am. I defend my political ideas because that's, and, and maybe I can change my mind. Mm -hmm. So if we give up from certainty, this um, anguish about, oh, there are improbable assumptions in our knowledge. Of course there are. Mm -hmm. That's why we're trying to develop it. That's why we do science. That's why we discuss in politics. That's why we have a discussion about moral arguments, right? Because it's the point is not about provable. The point about it's about convincing, convincing one another that one thing is better than the other. Let me disagree with Philip. And let me test him on that uh, strongly because I don't uh, share his uh, uh, philosophy in one specific point. In my worldview, in my understanding. Uh, it's not true at all that uh, we are locked in a Cartesian solipsism and there is something and only something which is evident to us, uh, which is our own consciousness, our own uh, subjective perspective or anything like that. In fact, my worldview is the opposite, is that uh, this uh, 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 Cartesian solipsism, it's a late uh, uh, construction of a certain culture uh, and uh, a much more uh, immediate worldview 
it's the opposite. Uh, there are things, there are brothers, there are, there are things, in fact, there are, there, are, there, are, there are other human beings. And oh, by the way, one of human beings happened to be me. So it's a later construction. So even that, I would disagree with them, with him, not because I think he's wrong uh, necessarily. That's one possible way of starting your world thinking. But there are other of self, just consider that nonsense. If so surely, a, the, surely, yeah. sorry to cut in, but surely this is where I have to say what's so refreshing about this whole discussion is that it comes with such humility and curiosity as well as such advocacy and expertise. And sometimes it is that humility and that curiosity or doubt or whatever you want to call that we are that we are missing. And when I listen to to to, to Philip talk about the the, the contradiction. Of, of some of his philosopher colleagues, you know, that, that, that um, uh, you know, that um, something that I touch is real, but something that I feel is not. And, and he talked about how he felt when he witnessed George Floyd's murder, which of course is something that because of this amazing technology, we can, we can now watch in our millions all over the world in, in intimate ways that wouldn't be the case some years ago. Of course, he was feeling that and he was experiencing that, but so were millions and millions of other people who, who describe similar feelings to the one that, to the, to the feeling that Philip had. Now, of course, that's predicated on the idea that all of those people are real and not just figments of Philip's imagination brought to him via Zoom. Of course, of course, of course, of course, I must trust that I'm really looking at Carlo right now and not the true and not the Truman show or or something that was, you know, that's being beamed to me from outer space. But the, but we get political, I think, when we um, and we can't run away from the we cannot use either science or religion to run away from the politics of how we navigate. I think was a, a word that, that Carlo used and possibly Philip as well, how we navigate this world together using such limited language and unlimited curiosity, how we deal with that doubt. And one of the things I'm worried about uh, in politics and as a human rights advocate is that sometimes the people without doubt, people, the people with absolute certainty whether in their science or whether in their, in their faith or their politics, they are so powerful and shrill and intimidating to, to millions and millions of people with an element of, 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 of doubt and that, they, that they win in some very um, illiberal, uh, intemperate ways. And it's a very good way to grab power in this world. To so claim you know, absolute certainty is, is a great way to be a great dictator in this world. Still, still now in the 21st century, look at Donald Trump. I have, another, I have another question related to the reaction to watching the George Floyd video, because you're, you tend to assume that, that the vast majority of people or everyone had the same reaction. But, it, but people approach Thing, even extreme things like that from a very different perspective. And you, these assumptions are not uh, unquestionable. Well, of course you are right. And what happened was that millions of people went one way and millions of people went the other way. And it turned out to be an incredibly polar and remains an incredibly polarizing event. But the one, the one um, thing we, we, we sort of know is that it didn't, there's not that many people who perhaps felt nothing I think I think if, if somebody felt absolute and, and there must be some who felt absolutely nothing uh, undoubtedly but I think that some kind of reaction whatever people say what even whatever people tell the focus group or or say on Twitter I suspect that some kind of reaction if you measured people's impulses in some scientific way some kind of reaction to that probably registered to most sentient human beings. And as you say, Isabel, uh, the polarizing thing is that for some people, that is a very, very painful in injustice. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.